it's a bit different this lockdown i feel it's i don't know stagnant isn't the right word because obviously we're in the, the middle of a global pandemic and i think that it's quite grounding i feel like even myself i got a little bit swept away with being in australia and being covid free and probably a bit more relaxed than i feel like we probably should have and you know it's come back to rare its head and let us know that it's still here this is the deep in the weeds podcast i'm anthony huckstep Last time, we caught up with Isabel Little. She'd taken six months to get a flight home from the UK and had just started as head chef at LP's Quality Meats. Sydney has just gone back into a 14-day lockdown. What impact is it having on the industry? Isabel, how are you going? Hey, Huck. I'm well. How are you? Good. You just uh, finally got back to Australia last time we spoke and started your role at LP's Quality Meats. That was some time ago now. What's what's it been like uh, in the role there for you? Yeah, look, it's been really interesting being uh, back in Australia and I'm not uh, native to Sydney, so I'm originally from Newcastle. So kind of being in the big city has been pretty interesting and uh, finding my feet a bit, which is always, you know, pretty fun and a bit turbulent and all of the energies are flying high. Uh, But it's been mostly rewarding and always positive to be back and to be settling into this role and this team here at LPs. Uh, you know Tan and Luke well and they've just been they've been amazing. Like there's no other word to kind of describe their welcomeness and how they've made me feel and I'm just very like grateful, I guess, to have been given this opportunity. The the model there at LP's transformed quite significantly from a really large restaurant to uh, a small goods producer with a small restaurant at the front. Tell us a bit about what you guys have been doing there. Yeah, so the old LP's was quite large, as you know, and then we've kind of put in a, a production room, uh, if you would, on the kind of the side of the restaurant. So there's literally a wall that divides the restaurant to the, the fermentation, core room, production, et cetera. Um, and out the front, we've got a small deli that we operate on the trading days. We've gone up from just three days a week now. So now we do four. We're open from Thursday to, to Sunday now. Um, we try and offer a selection of the charcuterie that the guys make in the small goods. Uh, every time we open, we kind of try and open up that deli section and get it, get it all working. Um, and we, uh, I guess, I, I don't really understand the style of food that I would describe my cooking as. I think it is, it's, it's kind of hard, you know, when people ask you like, oh, so, you know, what are you doing or where do you lean on? And I guess the, the simplest answer is, you know, it is very ingredient led. Um, and I think from our last conversation, you know, I've, I've grown up on a farm and I think that's very important to me to kind of know your surroundings and be conscious of the choices that you are making that you, that you put on your menu. Um, so I think I would go as far as saying we offer a very limited small plates menu during the, during the couple of days that we're open and we try and utilize the charcuterie and the small goods as much as we can, but lots of vegetables are starting to feature. We're using a really great supplier called Block, uh, Block 11 Organics. So we use Greg and it's been really awesome working with him and he's actually just got back to me this week and said, you know, let's talk about starting to plan what we're going to grow for you next year. So it's very, very exciting. Yeah. Um, so I think as far as that, I think it's it's easy. It's easy and accessible food um, with a little bit of a refined element towards the end, I would say. I know things have changed a little bit in the last week and we can get to that shortly, but do you have a dish or two that you were cooking prior to this lockdown that sort of uh, can exemplify kind of what you're cooking is like i think the the best one and i'm quite proud of it actually we've started working with hungerford meats up in brankston so i got in contact with michael to try and source a little bit uh, i guess more of a uh not i don't want to say better because what we had here was great but just a bit of a we're using beef from gloucester so it's a bit more local it's a bit more closer to home um, we're using Manning Valley beef. And I think the best dish that we've got on at the moment that is me is just really simply uh, smoked grilled rib- grilled ribeye in the Jospers. And we're just doing them with a bit of jus. Um, I think it's just letting that meat speak for itself. You know, they're almost four to five weeks aged in the aging room that we've kind of built here at LPs. 
So we've kind of got our own little meat program going at the moment, which I'm quite proud of. And we've got some sows on in there from Extraordinary Pork. Um, and I think that that is quite a special thing to have on a menu. Um, and I think letting, letting those ingredients just kind of be themselves on the plate is pretty, pretty important to me. Um, and I think before the lockdown, I think we really nailed, and I know it's a tricky one because lots of people don't really, don't really do the bitter, the bitter greens or leaves, but we really nailed this, uh, like burnt mandarin dressing radicchio salad. I know it sounds, sounds a bit, uh, quirky and weird, but it's loads of beetroots in there. It's quite jammy. Um, and if you're really into those, you know, the endive and the, and the Castle Franca and stuff, it's, um, it's definitely a winner for me anyway. So I think there are a couple of little things that have been tweaked on there that are, that are quite good. And we did a muscles with Anduya that I think was, um, we actually got a couple of emails about it because we try and change the menu every, every now and again. And we changed the muscles and we got a couple of emails being like, can you please just bring the, the muscles and Anduya back? <laughs> So that's pretty impressive. The guys in the production room, you know, are making the end year and it's hanging up when you come into the restaurant in these, in these huge large formats that you can kind of see. And we're just breaking them off as we need them and just sweating them down with some, you know, garlic and aromats and beautiful mussels and then just a touch of cream. And I think it was just like, it was a standout for sure. Now, lockdowns aren't unfamiliar territory um, for everyone in the hospitality sector, but take us back to the time and the conversations that you had leading up to that and, and what the plan was at LPs. Well, I think for most people it was quite sudden. I think um, we were kind of tinkering last week. We had a lot of bookings drop off and we were kind of tinkering with the idea of, you know, shit, what do we do? So like most people, you have that. we had that really quick brainstorming session, Tan, Luke and I, on the Wednesday actually. On the Thursday, we'd come up with a plan that we were going to do. We're doing the LPs, the boxes, which is kind of something that works really well here. Um, and by the Friday, we were basically just shut down. We'll do the boxes on the Friday and the Saturday, and we'll do the sandwiches that we offer, which is again, like I said, always pretty much using a, using a sausage or something from the guys. Um, and then this week, I'm just in here again, and we're just probably going to do the same thing. You know, I think. It's a bit different, this lockdown. I feel it's, I don't know, stagnant isn't the right word because obviously we're in the, the middle of a global pandemic and I think that it's quite grounding. I feel like even myself, I got a little bit swept away with being in Australia and being COVID-free and probably a bit more relaxed than I feel like we probably should have and, you know, it's come back to rear its head and let us know that it's still here. So I think Tan and Luke have been here before. Um, for me, it's quite interesting to come back to, to Sydney and then be into a lockdown and pivot to this takeaway model. Coming, like coming from overseas, you know, there was just so many places that, that could easily pivot and there were so many places that couldn't. And I feel that LPs is pretty well situated in the middle because, you know, we do, we have the ability to do these beautiful like smoked chicken packs over the weekends and we're going to do like the brisket, the LPs brisket this week and do some classic, classic LP staples that I think people for like a one night only thing are going to just be like, yeah, okay, cool. Like we can do this, but I'm nervous if this goes on for longer than the 14 days. Um, obviously like most people, you know, what's the, what's the go to plan after that? And I think it is an interesting conversation to have because on one hand, you don't really want to be having this conversation of what if this goes for longer than we think it's going to. But on the other hand, it's like, okay, this is a reality. We know what happens here. It can go one of two ways. So, yeah, I think just kind of doing what most people are doing and utilising what we have and making the best of a, of a, a pretty average situation. This episode is proudly supported by Montague, handpicked for you. The things that we're really looking for in plums, first of all, they've got to be sweet. We're really looking for a full flavour explosion um, in our plums. Red flesh is critically important to us. Higher in antioxidants, so all that good stuff. And then we're also looking at a slightly firmer texture. So there's a little, almost a little crunch. You know, that's a real driver for us. For more information, go to montague.com.au. You've got... Um 
quite a bit of experience with lockdowns. You were in Europe um, for a really long lockdown before coming back to Australia. Uh, what's what's the difference here, though, for you? Uh, well, it's funny because originally when we came back, we were like, if we go into lockdown, we'll just go and see our parents and our families. But the reality is we can't, you know, we can't, we can't do that. Um, I, will, I will rang my mum the other day and I was like, oh, I'll just go up to Newcastle. And she was like, no, you will not. Like, no way. Like, my sister's about to have another baby and she's got a toddler. So mum was just like, no way, mate. I'm sorry. Stay where you are. We'll see you soon. Um, but I think it has a certain, it has a certain sense of safe, if that, if that makes sense. I think obviously we're a lot closer to home and we're a lot closer to our families. So if push really came to shove, we let, you know, we could go to them or be with them. Um, but it, it feels different in some way. And I think it is just because we are home. Obviously we're not caught with a language barrier like we were in Amsterdam and in the UK, it was just, it's just so much bigger, if that makes sense. Like there's just so much more of everything that you kind of need to process in London. It was just like, whoa, shit, this is like real. When you walked out and you saw that tube, it was just empty. It was just like, man, this is, this is not messing around. But I think that being home, being safe, not having a language barrier, being with each other and just having the fact that we can go and see our families if it, if it really came to it has definitely made it uh, easier for sure. Given the experience that everyone has had prior to this with lockdowns and now faced with the hopefully a short term one, what, what sort of positives do you think um, have you found in this experience and are operations more equipped to deal with, with the stress of this? Yeah, I think they are. I think I think I've seen loads of places in Sydney be really quick to pivot to the um to the takeaway model, which I think is great. I think there are loads of places that do really well when it comes to this. I think uh but we do have positives and if we if we look for them we can find them. I think the really strong sense of community comes out in Australia and I think that when we're really down in the dumps, I think it's something that we A, we persevere and B I find that we're really quick to turn to our neighbours and be welcomed, um, which I think is quite a nice thing that has come out of this. Um, you know, we've got people in our apartment block who are a bit older and we're, you know, writing notes saying if you need us to do your shopping or whatever, you just, you know, let us know and we can figure that out. So I do think there are positives and I think a couple of them are the fact that we have a big sense of community around each other and I think it makes you really realize that, you know, we're not, you're not alone, I think. And I think that's one of the biggest positives that I've been able to take from this experience is realizing that you aren't alone and you can turn to people and say, Hey, I need some help. Are you available? Yes. Great. Let's go from here. So I think the, the positives for me definitely are a lot more communication between my peers, a lot more communication between my family and my friends. Um, and I tell you what, I'm grateful for FaceTime. Every time this happens, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, do you want to FaceTime? Great. I love that. I feel like we're not missing out. You almost don't miss a beat, I think. Do you think that there's a greater sense of connectivity um, within our society through food because of this experience that we're all sharing? Yes, I 100% do. I feel like in the first lockdown, you know, the world went wild with what was it? It was sourdough, wasn't it? Everyone was making sourdough or banana bread. But I feel like there was lots of recipe sharing. There was lots of methods and creativity with ways that you could do this and ways that we have tried to do this. And I think that I saw recently on Instagram, like Renee Redzepi is like helping um, Jeremy, what's his name? Jeremy, who is a guy who's all on vegetables, Jeremy Fox in San Francisco, you know, having this conversation openly about the preservation of like fruit in the style that the Japanese people do. And it was just incredible. It's like you're sharing information on this platform. Would you have done that like four years ago? Would you have been so open to be having this conversation and letting people in on this? I don't know. I don't know if they would have been, maybe they would have been, but for me, I just it caught my eye and I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing that we've reverted back to talking. We are talking again. It might be on a platform of social media and whatever, but, 
I feel like people are speaking to one another. And I think for me that that is a really big thing. I like to talk, I like to listen. And I think that for a while there, we were so enthralled in our own selves that it took this shakedown to be like, hey, I'm still here and I still want to like go to the pub with you and have a beer or I want to go with you and have this meal and have a conversation about how that made you feel, why they did it that way, why we would come back here and sometimes, you know, why we wouldn't come back here. But I do think that, yeah, the communication thing for me is just, I find it extraordinary. What about from a diner's perspective? You've got a long experience with different restaurants, both home and abroad. Do you find that customers are a bit more understanding of restaurants and there's a different connection there through this? Um, I find that the majority of people are quite aware that this is a hard time and there are different paths that we're going on, but I do still find that there are some people who don't get it. And I feel like they're the kind of people that just will never get why we cook and why we do the things that we do when it comes to food. I think that it's there's a certain percentage of people that are like, yep, we totally understand. You forgot something out of our box, it's totally fine. And then there are other people who are just like, no, it's meant to be this way, it has to be this way, it can only be this way, and we won't accept it any other way. Um, so I do feel like, I think that's with everything though, like that's always going to be an issue with, with dining. I think that people are just um, not that open or as engaged as they probably need to be. Um, and I think that irrespective of the pandemic or of takeaway or how you are perceived by the public, I think there are always going to be people who are on your side and totally with you and understand that mistakes happen and this is hospitality, you know, like this is why we're here. We're here to feed you and make you feel loved and welcome. But there are some people that I find that come in from the get-go and they are just, I don't know, they're just not about it. They don't want to be about it. And that's okay. Like I think that people are different, you know. Some people are really happy with having like a a stay-at-home meal and a, a bottle of wine. And I think that those people will never really understand why we do what we do. I know you briefly mentioned some of the things that you guys are cooking at the moment during this lockdown, but what are, what are you cooking up for this weekend? Yeah, so for this weekend, we're going to do an old school LP's like smoked brisket pack. Uh, it's going to be a brisket in our, in Luke's, our custom smoker that we have in here, low and slow overnight. We're going to do a whole fried chicken. We're kind of taking leads from, you know, Maddie Matheson's Meat and Three and Franklin Barbecue and just being like, what do you feel like? We feel like comfort, we feel like fat, and we feel like sugar and sweet. So we're basically doing a brisket, a chicken, some of the, uh, the Kodakino sausages that we're making here at LPs at the moment, and then just a, a truckload of sides to accompany those. And we're only going to do one box a week just to kind of keep it alive and keep people like feeling as if it's a bit different. And then we'll roll into, we do the sandwiches over the weekend. So we're doing, um, I think we're doing eggplant palm this weekend because, again, it's just like that lush, fatty, comforting type of thing that you would like to eat. And um, we do a muffin. We've got this muffin down pat at the moment. It's as close to McDonald's as I think we're ever going to get it. <laughs> and it's great. It's basically just pig's head sausage, egg, American cheddar cheese on a, on a little sourdough steamed muffin. And they're so good. They're dangerously good. You could probably eat like four of them until you were like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> pretty gnarly. But um, I'm pretty excited to kind of just open up and have some people come in from around Chippendale and, you know, socially distance, say hello and wish everyone well. Well, if only you delivered all across Australia, I think there'd be a lot of happy punters uh, with that sort of a menu. Isabel, we've loved catching up with you uh, again on Deep in the Weeds. Um, good luck with the next, hopefully it's only a fortnight and I uh, can get back to business, but we've loved having you on again and um, we'll talk again soon. Yeah, we'll do. Thanks, Huck. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we take a deep dive into the lives of the incredible people who ply their trade in the food and hospitality sector. Special thanks to executive producer Rob Locke for making this all happen. Follow us on Instagram at Deep in the Weeds Podcast or email us at podcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. 
stay safe and be well.